now we're recording for cystic fibrosis plus the uh, COPD part was a review all right from last week all right here's cystic fibrosis this is a genetic disorder hereditary uh, you've seen the movie right they had a cheesy movie about this what was the title six feet apart this is six feet or five feet something like that I think it's six feet apart uh, they're young. The the uh, characters in the movie, of course, were they are young um, because these people don't grow old. The oldest I've seen was probably 29 years old, and that patient was already on her deathbed. She was already dying, but she reached you know uh, late 20s. These people before uh, research and advanced treatments they don't live past 18 okay they die 18 maybe 19 okay and then that's it they're they're, they're uh, on a ventilator uh, and then close to dying uh, there's still no cure although the cystic fibrosis foundation is leading the research okay to finally cure this uh, unfortunate disorder they are trying genetic and uh, gene editing to to cure this um, they're showing signs of promise but these treatments are don't come cheap just like uh, what you've heard about what trump received for instance uh, monoclonal or even polyclonal antibodies they're not within reach by you and me all right these things uh, i'll give you an idea monoclonal antibody therapy for cancer if you choose that over chemo radiation or surgery monoclonal treatment antibody treatment for cancer can cost easily between 100 to 128,000 a year that's more than what most of us make in a year before taxes all right yeah and then it's not like you're gonna have treatment for just one year so you'll have multi-year treatment so you think if you if you own a health insurance company are you gonna cover this treatment mm -mm, no no you're gonna you're gonna find you know any loophole you can so that's why we really need universal access to health care right uh, no more of the you know this ridiculous healthcare system we have so something has to change the problem here is a like i said it's genetic there is a the gene lacks something which affects the the uh, chloride transport across cell membranes long story short the end result is these patients have really thick mucus they are unable to liquefy mucus they, they they produce these really thick tenacious large amounts of mucus and what parts of our body have mucus the respiratory tract what yeah. else? the stomach yeah the gi tract the entire yeah. gi tract yeah. is is yeah we we, we have mucus all over our GI tract, which is important because otherwise uh, we wouldn't be able to withstand the stomach acids that we produce. So we need a mucosal barrier. So we naturally have mucus in our GI tract and our respiratory tract. It, we need it. In these patients, though, because the CFTR gene is missing or defective in the least they have really thick mucus. So imagine thick mucus in your airway, in your lungs, thick mucus in your GI tract. What sorts of problems are we looking at here? And they have it from birth, from birth all the way to how, however long they live. So number one is breathing. So breathing is going to be extremely difficult. Let's go to signs and symptoms um, here. So we have mucus buildup in the respiratory tract, in the GI system, and also in the reproductive systems. We have mucus there too. 
uh, but our main problems really because uh, having mucus thick mucus in your reproductive tract isn't really uh, life-threatening okay but uh, respiratory tract yes breathing gas exchange is your number one priority problem next is nutrition when you have thick mucus like that in your GI tract can you still absorb nutrients no so you'll have uh, fat um, soluble vitamin problems you can't absorb them because of all that mucus so this is your frequent problem here mucus plugging your airways there's inflammation in the airway bronchiectasis um, stasis of mucus puts them at risk for infections meaning the more mucus you have then the more organisms will be stuck in there uh, plus the difficulty bringing them up means you'll have a lot of bacteria in the mucus which you cannot expectorate. So what do the bacteria which is in your mucus do if they're trapped in your lower airways? They cause infections. So you'll have frequent pneumonia, uh, pseudomonas, and there's a, um, there's a unique type of, I don't know if it's mentioned here, there's one complication there's an organism that is mainly found in cystic fibrosis patients which cause a severe respiratory illness it's it's uh, it causes a type of pneumonia similar to what COVID-19 uh, causes that type of pneumonia and when they're when they're having these infections they typically are in ICU and could potentially die So here's a picture of their airway. So it, it has constantly. So from birth to again forever, they will have to be doing some chest vibrations, bronchodilators, expectorants, humidification, um, several interventions in order to loosen these secretions for them to be able to a, a easier uh, uh, expectorate them. Here are your manifestations. So in addition to the presentation of difficulty breathing, pursed lip breathing, nasal flaring, all signs of respiratory distress, here are your GI symptoms. Patient will have foul smelling greasy stools because they will be unable to absorb fat, including fat soluble, soluble vitamins. In young patients, young CF patients, they'll have uh, intestinal blockage. And in most adults, they'll have severe constipation as a result. Most of them are skinny, yes? Seeing what? Seeing what? A patient? Uh, like I said, they don't, you don't see them regularly out. I mean, they go to regular schools. No, uh, they're usually at home, right? They, they, like I said, it's an unfortunate uh, condition. If they're well enough to go to school, they will be always wearing masks like we are now. Um, uh, typically, they'll be maybe homeschooled as a result because they are again very prone to infections. Plus, they, it's very distracting. You know, every hour they'll require. Um, nebulization, humidification, so they'll ha they require a lot of equipment okay, all day and you can't bring them to school. So most of these guys are probably homeschooled if they even go to school at all, right? Uh, and like I, I've been saying, they don't grow old. Okay? They, they, they get some infection and then they, they don't even reach um, late teen years. Okay? They, they die early because of complications. I mean, if they die early, how could they pass the genes down? Uh, what was that, sir? I say, if they die early, how could they pass the genes down? How could they pass the gene on? Like, if you die under 18, you won't get enough yeah. children. How would they replicate it? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's one thing good. It doesn't, um, yeah, but, but then it doesn't have to be passed on. Okay, so this is a genetic disorder. Yeah, it doesn't just run in the family. I mean, you possibly 
have this mutated gene that uh, cause you to have this chloride transport uh, problem. I mean, it doesn't have to run in families, but it is a genetic uh, disorder. Treatment, mostly symptomatic treatment. So similar to we just sit, finished COPD and um, which is similar to asthma. So same exact treatment. So we have bronchodilators, Saba, Labas. In addition though, we will have to give them enzymes because the pancreas, the pancreatic ducts will be obstructed by the mucus. So therefore the pancreatic enzymes cannot enter the stomach. So we're gonna have to give them the enzymes by mouth with the food. I'll give you, I, I think the, uh, can you guys go to iTunes U? I have the, the handout there from the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. I don't think I have access to it here. Um, let me see if I can open it. The handout I gave is not, uh, probably this one, let's see. Okay, here it is. This is the same one I have online, right? On your iTunes U. Yes? Okay, yeah. Yeah, uh, Teams people, can you see my screen? I opened the handout. Yes, yeah. All right, so this is what you follow for the exam. This is literally what we give out to the patients and the parents. So what are they? So since again, the rationale for taking them is your pancreas, although they're able to produce the enzymes, they're blocked by the thick mucus. So they cannot enter the stomach. As a result, you're gonna have to take them with your food in order for you to digest the nutrition that you just took. We need fat. We can't just live on carbohydrates and proteins. So we need fat plus we need the vitamins, uh, the fat soluble vitamins in order to have cellular processes, A, D, E, and K. So they're vital for cellular function. So in order to get them, you're going to have to take the enzymes with your food. So here are practical applications. So if uh, let's say it's a newborn, right? So for instance, infants and small children, we cannot have them swallow whole pills, correct? So we're gonna have to open the capsules and then it can be spread in soft food, applesauce, or given with a spoon. If it's a nursing child, a baby, then it will be uh, put it in the uh, breast milk or the formula. Then we have Here, avoid skipping enzymes. Remember, if they don't take the enzymes, then they don't have, they'll have problems with absorption. This is the result. Uh, this will result from the for, uh, in the foul smelling stools. And then the, the stools are greasy. They will also look weird. They'll look white or at least gray. Uh, not like the regular brown or um, a yellowish brown uh, color that we normally have in the stool. Okay, the, 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 the school will look really pale. Here's a note on if you're taking, let's say, fast food, for instance, a lot of fat in, in, the, in the meal. So they'll require higher doses of the enzymes. Uh, 
Um, do not crush them. They should be swallowed whole. You can open the capsules, but do not crush or chew the beads. They should be swallowed whole. So for children, that's why we give them with applesauce. That way they swallow it. They don't chew the beads because otherwise you'll destroy them. Uh, here's how you store them. Here, do not mix the enzymes into foods ahead of time. Uh, you do not refrigerate the enzymes. And they are, they do have an expiration date. Here are foods that do not require beads. I mean, um, the enzymes, because the, the rule is you eat them, you check the enzymes with all meals and snacks. However, snacks like these, which uh, contain very little uh, fat, if any, or nutrients, um, they don't require you, meaning you, you can handle this. The patients can absorb them fine without the enzymes. Okay, These are the exceptions that do not require enzymes. Meaning, if you're only drinking this and no food, then no enzyme is required, all right? But if you're taking these with a meal, of course, you have a meal, so you need the enzymes with them. Any question on the enzymes? Right. Yes, because they're not in your textbook. Uh, CF Foundation is a government website. Um, you have here .org, so yes, that is a government website. The what? Uh, it's in the second page, the exceptions, foods that do not need enzymes. All right, let's go back here. I mentioned the gene therapy, gene editing therapy. Like I said, it's really expensive, so it's not within reach for the common person. If you maybe have a, you no, know, the patient has a good sponsor willing to pay for gene editing, yeah, maybe they can avail of those, but um, again, it's, it's cost prohibitive. Um, plus, we have problems with insurance. This is a pre-existing condition, so um, this will continue to be a problem. Surgery is possible, meaning when we say surgery, we are going to have a lung transplant. So it, it is a option. You can have new lungs and then you can breathe better. But uh, you still have problems with your GI tract. But at least, you know, you're, you're OK with the breathing part, okay, which is the priority and we'll deal with the malnutrition later. Plus, we can handle that with pancreatic enzymes, okay, that can be managed. Uh, but it's really the respiratory condition that will kill the patient. All right, here's a summary of your patient's manifestations. So thick mucus everywhere, coughing nonstop, Oh, they'll be um, very good um, designated drivers because they technically can't drink alcohol. However, if you if you're doing tequila shots, then you can do body shots on these guys because they have very salty tasting skin. All right, you just put lemon and then you you're good to go. No, I didn't mean that, okay? That's that's not funny. Um, and that's it. I mean, the interventions, again, are similar, very similar to COPD. This is, after all, a gas exchange problem. Plus, of course, on top of that, you have a nutritional problem. Um, you just do these more frequently. Uh, by frequently, I mean every hour, right? That every hour, they'll have to do the treatments. The, They'll have the physiotherapy. We have equipment that, that that do chest vibrations to loosen the secretions to help them expectorate it better. Um, it's like a vest. They just put it on. It's like a 
um, a life jacket. You know what life, life, life jacket is, right? Yeah, they put it on, uh, it has uh, straps on, and then you turn, it's connected to a machine, you turn on the machine, the, the vest vibrates. So the vibration helps loosen the secretions, making it easier for them to expectorate them. Uh, again, they don't live long enough to have um, children. I mean, Mr. Chen mentioned that also. Um, yeah, plus it's not really life threatening. We're more concerned about the nutrition and the breathing. So if these people ever grow up, uh, live beyond 20s, they're definitely malnourished. They are skinny, small for their age. I mean, yeah, small for their age. Um, so you, plus because of the nutritional problems, you may have some uh, developmental delays as well uh, mentally. Okay, you'll have mental um, delay, not retardation technically, but you know they'll they'll be a little behind because of uh, poor nutrition. Uh, plus, they can't really do much else because you know they'll, they'll spend their time breathing plus with the treatments. Um, and and that will leave you less time for anything else, including school. Right? It's 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 a really hard it's a hard life. Uh, here's your genetic screening. So if uh, uh, parents already have one child with CF, they should be talked to. Um, I mean to consider, you know, have about having any more biologic children because uh, there's a tendency they may have more. Any question on CF? No? Okay, let's take a short break. Let's come back at 1.55, 15 minutes. <laughs> 